the right. I mean, the last question you started was the conditions of, I mean, the causes of Sujud al Okay, The causes for Sujud al -Sahawi. What is Sujud al -Sahawi? The last lesson we had yesterday. Mashallah. So a sahwi basically means when you forget something. So sujood a sahwi is a sujood or a prostration of forgetfulness. So when you forget something in your prayer, then that is what you come up with is called sujood a sahwi. So yesterday I gave you some examples, but we'll go over that today and forget inshallah ta'ala. So that is where we stopped yesterday. So let me see if I can pull that up. <coughs> okay, so we do a little bit review. Um, yesterday's lesson so we said there are certain times of the day when salah becomes haram so you you remember that right one of the lessons we had yesterday was there are five times during the day when you cannot pray a prayer that has no immediate cause or a preceding cause so anyone who can tell me one of those times that is haram to pray? Yes, sir. Uh, after Asr and after Fajr. Mashallah. So Mahat, I mean, Salat already gave me two. After Asr prayer and also after Fajr prayer. So you cannot pray any Sunnah, any Sunnah that has no immediate cause or a preceding cause. So after Fajr prayer, if you want to pray Sunnah, you wait until sunrise. After answer prayer, if you want to pray just a general sunnah, you wait until uh, sunset, until Maghrib time. Mahad, what's going on? I have a question. Yeah. There's another space here, another space here. Okay, so those are two times, so I need three more. <laughs> right. When the sun is at its zenith when the sun is overhead, right here. So at that time, you also cannot pray any sunnah prayer that has no immediate or preceding cause until the sun shifts, okay, to a side. Uh, hey, Umayma. Okay, so at the time when you still have the pale and the yellow colors, that time also you cannot pray, until the sun full sets. Mm -hmm. Another time? Yes, Ahmed? Also, at the time of sunrise. So immediately when the sun rises, you cannot pray. So you wait until the sun rises up to the extent of the height of what? The height of a spear. Excellent, mashallah. Mashallah. So those are the five times that it is haram to pray salah. Also, another, another lesson we had was the times of Salah. Now, we pray five times a day. So, we said if you have no watch or there's no technology, there's no way, there's no system that will tell you what time it is, then in our kitab yesterday, we studied there are other ways that you can determine when the prayer time is. Okay? So, how, what is the beginning of Duhur time? Duhur time starts when? Okay. Don't tell me a watch, okay? So, from yesterday's lesson. So, Duhur time starts when? Yes, ma'am? It starts um, around uh, the afternoon, 1 o'clock. 
I know under one o'clock. So yesterday we had a lesson. There are certain ways that we can determine if it is the prayer time. As, uh, my... Excellent. So the beginning of the whole time is when the sun descends from its zenith. Okay? So when the sun shifts from the overhead towards the sunset side. That is the beginning of the whole time. And then when does it end? The whole time ends when? And how it Excellent. Excellent. So the whole time ends when object is shadow equal to this length. So when an object and its shadow are of the same length, that is the end of the whole time. And then as of time starts that time. When an object and its shadow are of the same height, but you add a little bit more. Was that like a little a little bit more? And then Asr prayer will end what time? Yes, Muhammad. At sunset. So Asr prayer ends at sunset. And then when does Maghrib start? Anas? So Maghrib starts at sunset. And then when does it end? Yes, Shai? Excellent. When the red horizon disappears. So Maghrib time starts at sunset and then it ends when the red horizon disappears. And then that's when Asha starts. And then Isha will end when? When is the end of Isha time? So then Isha starts when the red horizon disappears and then it will end when? And yet. Okay, someone tell me, when does Asha end? It ends at dawn, mashallah. So at dawn, we even give a specific uh, description of that time. It's when the Fajr Sadiq appears. Okay, dawn is when a Fajr Sadiq, which we said is, you'll see a light that goes which way? Vertical or, or horizontal? Horizontal, excellent. So when that light that goes horizontal way appears on that horizon, on that side of the sky, then that is when Fajr, when Asha ends. And that is when Fajr prayer starts. So Fajr prayer will start at the dawn, or otherwise when the Fajr Sadiq appears, and it will end when? Uh, Abdullahi. No, Abdullahi Mano. Yes. When does Fajr prayer end? Fajr prayer yes, it starts. When the Fajr Sadiq appears, and then it's going to end when? Sunrise. Sunrise. What's that? Sunrise. At sunrise, yes. So Fajr prayer will end at sunrise. It will end at sunrise. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start today's lesson. So we started this yesterday. Uh, I don't think we had enough time to go over all of it. <coughs> so Asbabu Sujudu Sahwi. On page. On page 65. On page 65, uh, towards the end. As Fasulun Asbabu Sujud is Sahwi or Abaatun. So the causes of Sujud is Sahwi are four. And then Sujud is Sahwi is the prostration of forgetfulness. So Sujud is Sahwi. Sujud Sajda is Sahwi means prostration of forgetfulness. Okay? It is not other sujood which is the pillar of the salah, no. This is only a sujood that you come with when something happens during your prayer. Okay, during your salah, something happens. And then here we will learn about what are some things that will make me to come with a sujood sahu. Okay? The procession of forgetfulness. This is usually done 
when you are about to finish your salah and you finish your last tahiyyat, before you say assalamu alaikum, then you do two sujood. That is called sujood al sahu. So, what are some of the things that might cause sujood al sahu? So, here, number one. So number one, تركوا بعض من أبعاض الصلاة أو بعض البعض. So that's number one. تركوا بعض من أبعاض الصلاة أو بعض البعض. It's leaving out some of the Sunnah أبعاض. Sunnah أبعاض is the main Sunnah. Either completely or part of it. So we also go and learn about one of the main Sunnah. So in the Salah. We have the arkan, the pillars, and we have the sunnah. So some of the sunnah are main. That if you leave them out, you will be compelled to come with sujood and sahu. Some other sunnah, you don't have to do anything if you leave it out. For example, let's say, the other day we learned there is sunnah to raise your hand when you are doing Allahu Akbar, right? But if for some reason you don't raise your hand, your salah is still okay. Because that's not part of the main sunnah. Now, an example of the main sunnah would be the first tahiyyat. So when you're praying Maghrib, Isha, Dhuhr, and Asr, those prayers that have more than two raka'ah, so in your first tahiyyat, So the first attahiyyat, if for some reason you forget about it and then you find yourself standing for the third raka'ah, then you don't go back for that attahiyyat. You just continue with your salah and then when you are about to finish your salah, before you say assalamu alaikum, you come with sujood al So that's number one. It's leaving out some of the main sunnah. Number two. فعل ما يبدل عنده ولا يبدل سحره إلى فعله ناسيا. is to forgetfully do an action that will nullify the salah if it was done intentionally. so there are certain things if you do intentionally it will nullify your salah. but if you do it in the state of forgetfulness then you only come up with sujood al sahu. let's say you are praying and then you immediately turn your head this way. If you have done that unintentionally, then before you finish your salah, you will do it Also, let's say you have done another extra salah, extra pillar of salah. Okay? Let's say you have done two rukur. You didn't know you did two, but then you realize, oh, I have done two rukur. If you do that intentionally, then your salah will be nullified. But if you have done that unintentionally, or you forget about it, then you only come with sujood the sahu So if you do an action forgetfully during the salah, then you come with sujood the sahu Number three, al-thalif, naqlu ruqnin qawliyin ila ghayri mahalli. To recite a verbal integral of salah in the wrong place. So yesterday I gave an example. So when you are standing for Surah Fatiha, what if you read at tahiyyat al barakat al salawat with your standing? Instead of reading Fatiha, you just realize you're reading tahiyyat in the, the standing position. And then you just remember, oh, I'm doing it in the wrong place. Then you just go back and then you read your Fatiha, and then before you finish your salah, you do to the sahu. Or maybe instead of doing at tahiyyat, you find yourself reading Fatiha. Okay? So if you forget about it, and then you recite a verbal pillar like the Fatiha and the uh, at the short of the end, then you do, then you do, at the, I mean, sujood uh, al uh, at the end. And then number four, rukunin fi'liyin ma ihtimal ziyada. rukunin fi'liyin ma ihtimal ziyada is to perform a physical pillar with the possibility of it being an extra integral. Yeah, like when I get you right now. So for example, you are praying. 
and then you were suspicious, you were not sure. <coughs> One speaker, okay? So during your salah, you are not sure if you prayed three raka'ah or four raka'ah. You said, have I prayed three? Have I prayed four? You are, you are unsure. Then what you will do is, you say, okay, I prayed three. And then you come with another pillow, another raka'ah. Then that extra raka'ah, that could be an extra one, could be a fifth one, or it could be a fourth one. It could be both. Because you are not sure if you have prayed three or you prayed four. Okay? So if you suspect it, it's, it's, it's special time. You are supposed, supposed to pray four. And then you are not sure if it was three or four that you prayed. It's the same as the student you do. So so you do with the way we do you with is the same as other students. So you have to do two times. So before you say assalamu alaikum, if you were uh, if you had a suspicion during your salah, if any of this four happened during your salah, before you say assalamu alaikum, you go down for sujood two times. You do the same way you will do the other sujood during your salah. So that is where we stopped yesterday. Okay. Next on page 66, I mean 67. Abu Salati Sabatum. The Sunan Abab or the main Sunnah of Salah at seven. So now the first course of Sujud Sahwi was leaving out a main sunnah. Now here we are learning about which ones are the main sunnah. Okay? So the main sunnah of salah is seven. Ab'ad salat is seven. The main sunnah. So when you hear ab'ad, ab'ad means the main sunnah. The main sunnah. So what do we call main sunnah in our salah? Here it is. There are seven of them. But basically there are only two. Okay? There are two, but like in every sunnah, there are a couple other things that also happen within that sunnah. That is why the Shaykh is to make them seven. But in general, it is the first atahiyyat and khunut. Those are the two ones. So number one, it said at tashahudul awwal. It's the recitation of the first tashahud. So this is only possible for four prayers. Bukhur, Asr, Maghrib, and Asha. For Fajr prayer, we only have one tashahud. Okay? So the first atahiyyat is Ab'abu Salah. It's one of the main Sunnah of Salah. It's not a pillar. If you leave it out, your Salah is still okay. So you only do so you do Sahum. So the first yeah, so at Tashahud al-Awwal. Number two is Waqu'uduhu. See, it's still connected with this. So the sitting down for the first at Tahiyyat. So that's also another Sunnah. Okay? Because when you do at Tahiyyat, you are supposed to do it in a sitting position. So even that sitting itself is another pillar, is another sunnah, main sunnah. And then number three, the recitation of Wassalatu ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi. So the recitation of salah upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Saying Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. And that at tahiyyat is also another, another main sunnah. So all these three, there's one more. These three are connected. They're all about the first atahiyyat. Number one is the reading of the atahiyyat itself. Number two is reading that atahiyyat in that sitting position. Itself is another sunnah. Okay. And then number three is the recitation of Allahumma salli ala Muhammad in that first atahiyyat. Now, number four is wassalatu ala al-ala fi tashahud al-akhir So the recitation of salah upon the Prophet's family and the final at-tahiyyat and the final tashahud The final tashahud is a pillar of salah so that one you cannot leave it out The last at-tahiyyat, that one is a pillar Okay, remember when we were doing akhano salah, uh, 17 of them 
the last tashahud is a pill of salah. But here it says, during that tashahud, if you forget to recite the salutation upon the Prophet's family, okay? if you say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, that one's a pillar. And the last is the But if you say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, wa ala alihi, wa ala alihi, also upon the family of the Prophet. So if you do not say that in the last Atahiyyat, then you also, it is a main sunnah. So, sending salutation to the Prophet's family in the last Tashahud is one of the main sunnah. Okay? If you leave out any of this, what do we do? Sujood al-Sahri, mashallah. If you leave out any of this during your Salah, your Salah is still complete. But you come up with sujood to sahab So this is Ab'abu Salah, the main sunnah. Your salah is still okay, but you have to come with sujood to sahab if you leave it any of this, if you leave out any of this. If you leave out a pillar of salah, then sujood to sahab will not cover it. You have to come with that pillar. Let's say during your salah, you forgot to do rukun. At the end, you cannot say, I'm going to do sujood to sahab now. Because you are missing out a pillar. So the Sahwi only applies if you leave out this main sunnah. If you leave out a pillar like you have left, you did not read Fatiha. Or you did not do report, Or you did not do sujood. So all that stuff, you have to go back and do those pillars. So the Sahwi will not cover that. So the Sahwi will only cover this, the main sunnah. So number five, wal qunut, the recitation of dua of qunut. Qunut is the prayer that we do during Fajr prayer. It's a dua that we do during Fajr Salah. Okay? If you have been coming to the masjid, you have seen, again, this only is specific to our school of thought, Imam Shafi'i. Okay? You will find other mosques, they may not do the qunut during the Fajr prayer. So qunut is a dua or a prayer that you come with during the last raka'ah of Fajr prayer, when you come up for i'tidal. So Fajr prayer, we do two raka'ah, okay? So for your last raka'ah, once you do ruku' and then you come back up for i'tidal, before you go down for sujood, then you come up with a prayer, okay? Allahumma hdini fi man hadayt, wa aafini fi man aafayt, wa tawallani fi man tawallayt. So that one is called qunut. So, according to our school of thought, Imam Shafi'i, that's the one we follow. So, according to Imam Shafi'i, we are supposed to come up with Qunut during the Fajr prayer. If you leave it out, it's still your side, it's okay. You only do, so you do so. Okay. And then the other two is something to do with also the Qunut. Number six is what salatu wa salamu ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi. It's the recitation of salah and salam upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Qunut. Means you're supposed to say, Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad. So is that during the Qunut? Okay? During that prayer, the recitation of salli and salam upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is also a main sunnah. And finally, number seven, wa alihi wa sahbihi fi. Also, the recitation of Salah and Salam upon the Prophet's family Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions. So again, if you say Allahumma Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi with his family wa sahabihi his companions. Okay? So Allahumma Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi. So if you say that, then that is a main sunnah. So as you can see here, the main sunnah mostly relates to the tahiyyat and the qunut. Okay? Three of them relate to the first tahiyyat. The tashahud itself, sitting for the tashahud, and also say Allahumma salli ala Muhammad in that tashahud. And then in the last tashahud, sending salutation to the Prophet's family. Say Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi. Okay? So that's the main sunnah. And then number five is about the qunut that we do during the Fajr prayer. Okay? 
during the Fajr prayer, and then during the Qunud, we are supposed also to send peace and blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, and then during the Qunud, also we are supposed to send peace and blessings upon the Prophet's family and his companions. So these are the main sunnah, the main sunnah of Abu Salah. If you leave out any of this during the prayer, then we do sujood bissah. Are we clear on that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let's say I have only done one sujood for my special prayer. So the first rakaat, I have done one sujood. So at the end of salah, can I come up with sujood bissah? No. No. Why not? It's a pillar. Because it is a pillar of salah, mashallah. So that sujood is a pillar of salah. So if you leave out a sujood during the prayer, then sujood the sawi will not cover that. You have to come up with that pillar. So if you are missing a pillar, nothing will cover for that pillar unless you come up with it. But if you miss up any of the main sunnah or any of the other three things we mentioned, then you do sujood the sawi. They will cover it. That will cover it. Yes. Imam is in the sujood. Uh -huh. So you join the salah when the Imam is already in sujood. You can join the Imam, but that will not count for your taraka. Yeah, will not, you, unless you again remember, you have to have your tekbir al ihram, and then at least you have to have rukhur. So if you join the prayer, the jama'ah, when they are in the rukhur position, then the Surah Al-Fatiha will be excused. But if you join the Jama'ah when they are in the sujood, sujood position, then you can join them, but that will not count for your as a rakah. So you have to do or perform a complete rakah with your Fatiha and Ruku and the sujood. Okay. All right, so this will be a little bit long section. The factors that nullify Salah. So on page 68, page 68, first one, Taqru salah bi arba'a ashrata khaslatan. So the factors that nullify salah are 14. Okay? The factors that nullify salah are 14. So number one, Bil Hadith. So if you look at your book, number one is Bil Hadith. Bil Hadith or the ritual impurity. We have done this before, right? We have the minor one and the major one. So Hadith is, you have the minor one, is the thing that will force you to have wudu. And then the major one is the things that will make you to have a compulsory shower. Okay? So, if any of those things happen during your salah, okay, then your salah will be nullified. Maybe someone was telling me yesterday, actually, you are praying and you, you pass gas. That will come with hadith. So, your, your salah is nullified because you have no wudu. Okay? One of the conditions for salah is buhara. So, you have to have wudu. So, the things that will nullify your salah is number one. Maybe you have no wudu, then your salah will be nullified. So if something happens during your salah that will that nullify your wudu, then your salah is also nullified. So hadith. Number two. Wa bi wudu in nijasati illam tulqa halan min ghayri hamlin. Wa bi wudu in nijasati illam tulqa halan min ghayri hamlin. Is impurity falling on the body or on clothes if not removed immediately without carrying it? So, as you are praying, a nijasa fell on you. If that nijasa stays in your body for a little while, then your salah will be nullified. Okay? So, a nijasa fell on you, then you are supposed to throw it away. You are not supposed to carry it with your hand. 
Okay? Let's say like it is, it is a, like a, a dry najasa, like a cow dung or a camel dung, whatever it is, it fall upon you, then you throw it away. Okay? You throw it away without caring with your hand. Okay? But if that najasa stays on you for a long time, then your salah is will be nullified. So it's impurity falling on your body or your clothes. That will nullify your salah if it is not removed immediately. So the moment it falls upon you, you throw it away. Don't care with your hand. Just throw it away, then your salah is still okay. Number three. One kishafil awrati illam tustar halan. One kishafil awrati illam tustar halan is exposing the aura if it is not covered immediately. So during your prayer time, and the wind came, it blew your clothes. And then your private part or your aura. So we have done this part already, the aura. So during Salah time, when we are talking about aura, for the men, it is anything between the navel and the knees. And for the ladies, it is all of the body except the hands and, and the face. So if any part of your body will be exposed during your Salah, you are supposed to cover that immediately. But if you don't cover that immediately and then your aura stays exposed for a long time, then your salah will be nullified. Uh, right? Number four. One is to intentionally utter a word, I mean one or two letters that can be clearly understood. So in your prayer you just said something else, you spoke. Okay? So you either said a word or one or two letters that can be understood. Okay? So one of the examples that the scholars give is like if you say during your prayer time you said Qi. Qi is just one word, I mean one letter, I mean it's just one letter, but it has a meaning. Okay, it basically means watch out. Okay, so it can be just one letter that has a meaning, or two or more letters that can be understood. Okay, or maybe you you, you laugh in your prayer. Okay, yeah, so you laugh or you you talk during your prayer, then that will nullify, that will nullify your salah. So to intentionally say one or two letters which can be clearly understood. That's number four. And then number five. Wal mufdiri amdan. Wal mufdiri amdan is to break your fast intentional in salah. Let's say you are fasting. Okay? You are fasting. So anything that will break your fast. If you do that when you are in the salah, then also your salah will be nullified. Okay? What are some of the things that will nullify your fasting? Like you eat, right? So if you eat when you're praying, then I thought that will come later on, that will also nullify your salah. Or maybe you, you poke something in your ear when you're praying. You, did, you poke something in your ear, and then during your prayer time, that will break your fast, it will also break your, your salah. Okay? So if you intentionally break your fasting, in Salah, then also your Salah will be nullified. And then number six, Wal Akli Al Kathir Nasiyan. Wal Akli Al Kathir Nasiyan is to forgetfully eat Allah. So you are praying, and for some reason you start eating. Okay? Yeah. So in the prayer, if you start eating something, then even if you are doing that in the state of forgetfulness, your salah will still be nullified. Okay? And then number seven. وَثَلَاثِ حَرَكَاتٍ مُتَوَالِيَاتٍ وَلَوْ سَحْوًا وَثَلَاثِ حَرَكَاتٍ مُتَوَالِيَاتٍ وَلَوْ سَحْوًا Extra movement. I mean, number seven. Three consecutive motions. Even if you have done that in volunteer. So in your salah, if you do three, three consecutive movements, you'll find people who just walk in their salah. They just come from here, they go this way, 
Now, if you do three consecutive movements in your salah, then your salah is nullified. You have to start over. Okay? Or let's say I was praying and then I scratched my head, I scratched my chest, I scratched this. You find people doing that, right? Yeah. You're praying and you're like this, this. Yeah. Fixing your shot like this. Now, all those movements will nullify yourself. You do them consecutively. But if you do them like one at a time, let's say I just scratch my head. And then later on, and then I scratch my, this side of my body. So that's okay. As long as they are not consecutive. If the three movements are consecutive, that will nullify your salah. If they are not consecutive, then your salah is still okay. So you do, you move one time, or maybe the person who was in front of you just left the line. So you want to fill that gap. So you slowly make one, and then two, you stop. Even if you do not get to that space, you stop there, you wait. And then later on you can move again. But I don't just walk in the salah, no. So you do three consecutive movements, that will nullify your salah. Okay. So that was Mathalati Harakatin Mutawaliyatin wa Usehwan. Three consecutive movements, even if you do that in the state of forgetfulness, your salah will be nullified. Number eight. Walwatbat al fahisha. Walwatbat al fahisha is extra movement that is contrary to the habit of a sane person. Okay. It's an extra movement that is contrary to the habit of a sane of, of a sane person. I mean, you are in the salah and you just jump. <laughs> is jumping a normal thing to do in the salah? No, no it's not. So in your salah, if you jump, okay. Especially for the ladies, maybe a spider comes from here, what happens? Yeah, you run, right? Yeah. yeah. So, it's better to come to the ladies. Yeah. So, there's, there's not something very common for you to run or walk or jump in a salah. Right? In, if any of that happens, then the salah is it's nullified, it's gone. Okay? And then number nine. وَالْضَرْبَةِ الْمُفْرِضَةِ وَالْضَرْبَةِ الْمُفْرِضَةِ is an excessive strike of the hand. An excessive strike of the hand. Maybe you are praying and then you start fighting with somebody. Yeah. So you, you hit somebody with your hand. Okay? Have you seen that? I have seen it. Yeah. The boys, especially when you are praying, Maybe someone pushes you, or you push them, or you hit them. Uh, you, uh, yeah. So, wal wal darbat al mufrita that is an excessive strike of the hand. So, if you hit somebody with your hand, you slap somebody during the prayer, and also your so that will be nullified. There is one exception. I don't know we are not at that level yet. So if if you have a sutra, you have a barrier, right? You are, you are praying, the sunnah or another prayer, you place something before you. It's called a sutra, a barrier. That is supposed to protect the people from passing in front of you. So if for some reason someone wants to pass right in front of you when you are praying, you stop them the first time. They come back again, you stop them for a second time. If they come back for a third time, that's when you fight with them. And they still your salah will be okay. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, you just you stop them. You know, whatever. You can hit them, you can push them away. Yeah. yeah. So that if someone tries to pass in front of you, provided that you have a sutra, you place something in front of you. But if you do not place anything in front of you, then you cannot fight with them. So the first condition is, you have to place something in front of you, telling the people that this is my sutra, this is my barrier, so don't come in between my sutra and me. Okay? Yeah, that's your prayer space. Yeah. So just don't worry about that part. So now, if you hit somebody, your, your salah will be nullified. So let's just stop there. Okay? Number 10. وزيادة ركن فعلي عمدا 
وزيادة ركن فعلي عمدا is to intentionally add an extra physical pillar of salah. Okay? So now we are about to pray Asha to pray Asha, right? Now it's about Asha time. So when we pray four raka'ah, what if you say, okay, let me add a fifth one. I can add a fifth raka'ah or I can add a sixth one. Is that, is that okay? No. no. You cannot intentionally add an extra pillar. Or you say, okay, I have done my rukur. Before I go back for sujood, let me do another rukur again. Or you do your sujood two times, you say, let me make it four of them. So if you add an extra physical pillar of salah intentionally, again, if you are doing this, yeah, purpose is what we're talking about. But like if it is unintentional or you're in the state of forgetfulness, then you'll excuse and then you do it yourself. But if you're doing this intentionally, then your salah will be nullified. Okay, number 11. What taqadumi ala imamihi biruknayn fi'liyayn? What taqadumi ala imamihi biruknayn fi'liyayn? Is to precede the imam in two physical integrals of salah. So you're praying in a jama'ah, in a congregation. You are supposed to follow the Imam. Yeah, we're going to learn about how we are supposed to do during Jama'ah. But in this case here, you are supposed to follow the Imam. You are not supposed to supposed to be doing uh, pillars of Salah before the Imam. You are supposed to follow the Imam. So if you precede the Imam with two physical pillars of Salah, then your salah will be nullified. So your imam is standing, he's still reading Fatiha, but you say, oh, I have finished my Fatiha, let me go ahead and do my rukur and my ihtidal. You cannot do that. If you are a ma'amuk, if you are following an imam, then you are supposed to always be following the imam. You cannot be before the imam. Okay? So if you proceed, that means you do two actions of Salah before the Imam does it, then your Salah is nullified. Okay? So to precede the Imam in two physical pillars of Salah. Also the same is for the next one, to delay. So either to proceed or to delay with two integrals without an excuse. So that's number 12. Number 12 is what تَخَلُّفِ بِهِمَا بِغَيْرِ عُذْرٍ So if you are a ma'amum or a follower, you are supposed to follow the imam. When the imam goes for ruku, then you do ruku after him. But then if you are behind, if you delay your movement after the imam for more than two pillars, let's say the imam finished fasting, huh? he went for ruku, he went for ihtidal, and now he's doing sujood, and you are still standing for fatiha. If you have a valid excuse, maybe you are someone uh, who you have a difficulty reading the Fatiha. Okay? Maybe you'll be excused. So it is saying without an excuse. So if you delay with two integrals without an excuse, then your salah will be nullified. Always you are supposed to follow the Imam. Okay? And then number 13. وَالنِّيَةِ قَضْعِ السَّلَاةِ وَالتَّعْلِيقِ قَضْعِهَا بِشَيْءٍ وَالنِّيَّةِ قَطْعِ السَّلَاةِ وَتَعْلِيقِ قَطْعِهَا بِشَيْءٍ The intention of terminating or ending your salah by suspending its termination on a foreign action. Okay? So, let's say you are praying and you said if, if Muhammad walks into the masjid, I'm going to stop my salah. Then you intending that itself will nullify your salah. Okay? Because you have already told yourself that I'm going to end my salah if something happens. So you only intending that itself will nullify your salah. So you don't have to be in your salah waiting for that thing to happen. It does have to happen. Even if Muhammad does not come into the masjid, your salah is still nullified. Okay? So if you intend to terminate or end your salah by 
connecting that with something else. He said, if something happens, I'm going to end my salah, then right there your salah is finished. You are no longer praying. Okay? And then finally, what taradudi fi qat'iha? Number 14. What taradudi fi qat'iha? It is also by doubting it is termination. By doubting, I know the translator used to doubt, but I'll say what taradudi is if you repeatedly, okay? If you repeatedly ask yourself, I'm going to end my salah, I'm not going to end it. I'm going to end it, I'm not going to end it. I'm going to end it, I'm not going to end it. If that thing comes back to your mind, multiple times, then your salah is also, also nullified. So this one, it does have to be connected with something else. You just intend and say, let end my, let, I will end my salah. Or let's see if, uh, let's say for some, uh, yeah. Abdullahi Ahmed. Yeah. Let's say you are praying, and then you have some stomach issues. You want to run to the bathroom, okay? So you ask yourself, uh, maybe I cannot wait till the Imam finishes the Salah, let me go run to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And you say, okay, let me say it. And you say, oh no, I need to go. So you're just talking to yourself right in the prayer, okay? You're intending to end your Salah, and you're like, oh, let me wait, let me go, let me wait, let me go. Then that will nullify your Salah. So you don't have to wait for the Imam to end it. You can just go to the bathroom, finish your thing, and then come back later on, okay? Once that comes to your mind, once you have that taraddu, just repeatedly comes to your mind to end your salah. Okay? Then right there your salah is, is nullified. Okay, so those are the 14, 14 factors that will nullify the salah. That was a long list. But you can always go back to your book and then read about them. Okay? So number one was the hadith, the ritual impurity. Okay? Ritual impurity. Number two, as if an adjuster falls in your body or in your clothes and you will not remove that immediately without caring with your hand. And then number three is if your aura or your private part is, is exposed during your prayer time and you don't cover that immediately. And then, so even that one is very common for the for our teenagers here. If you have, just wear a shirt or like a t-shirt which is too short for you. And then when you bend for your ruku, your back is exposed. See, if anything between the navel and the knee is exposed during your prayer time, then your salah is nullified. So you may find some boys who are sitting in the salah, but their back is exposed. Okay? Or their knees. Or even the knees are exposed, they have shorts that will not even cover the knees. Then you are not actually praying. Okay? You are not actually praying because one of the conditions of the salah is you have to cover your aura. So for the boys, anything between the navel and the knees, if any of that part is not covered, then don't pray. Go find a proper cloth for the salah. Okay? For the ladies, the same thing also. Your, your hands and your face is the only thing that should show during the prayer time. Okay? Yeah. So number four is to intentionally say a letter or two letters that can be understood during the salah. And then number four is, number five is to break your fast intentionally in Salah. So you are fasting and then you break your fast in your prayer and also your prayer is nullified. Number six is to forgetfully eat a lot. So if you eat something while you are praying, then Salah is gone. Number seven is three consecutive mo uh, movements, even if you do that involuntarily. Okay. Number eight is extra movement that is contrary to the habit of a sane person, like you jump. In the salah. And then number nine is an excessive strike of the hand if you hit somebody during the salah. And then number ten is to intentionally add an extra physical pillar of salah. And instead of doing two, uh, one to four, you have done two, three, four, or four. You, don't, you are doing that intentionally. Number eleven, to perceive the imam in two physical pillars of salah. So if you have done two of them, two pillars before even the imam did it, and your salah is nullified. Also, if you delay from the imam with two pillars of salah without an excuse, that will also nullify your salah. And then number 13 is the intention of terminating the salah. So you intend to terminate your salah or you connect it is termination with a foreign thing. Ahmed? And 
And then number 14 is if you repeat in the doubt that you are going to end your salah, then also that will nullify your salah. All right, next section. So the intention of being an Imam is compulsory in four conditions. Okay? In four conditions. So again here we are starting the topic of praying in congregation in Jama'ah. Okay? Yeah. There are four times that you have to come with the intention of being an Imam. An Imam means someone who is leading the prayer. So there are four situations that it is compulsory upon you to come with the intention of being an Imam. Number one, Al Jumu'at, the Friday prayer. So if you happen to lead a Friday prayer, then whenever you are intending for your salah, in your salah you have to add that you are also an imam. Okay? Let me say it in a way to follow salat in the Jumu'ati Raka'ataini, Imaman. That that imam and that you are an imam. Even if you do not say it as a word of mouth, then you have to come with the intention. You add in your intention that you are an imam for this prayer. So if you are an imam, do not Friday prayer, then it is compulsory that you come with the intention of being an imam. Number two is wal mu'adatu. Wal mu'adatu is to repeat a farad or sunnah prayer and it is time hoping for an extra reward. So mu'adah basically means a prayer that's been repeated. So mu'adah means a prayer that's been repeated. So let's say you pray Isha by yourself and then for some reason you came to the masjid and then there's another group who wants to pray now. You want to join them because you want to add some extra reward. And then they tell you to leave the prayer. Now, since you have prayed Isha already and this is the second time you are praying, then you are supposed to come with that intention of being an Imam. So al muada is basically a prayer that is being repeated. You are praying for a second time or a third time. Okay? And you are looking for an extra reward. Okay? Yeah. If you're looking for an extra reward, because if you pray by yourself, you're getting one. But if you pray with the congregation, you are being rewarded 27 times. So if you want to get the extra reward, then you can pray a second time with a jama'ah. And then if they tell you to lead the prayer, then you intend that you are an imam for this jama'ah. Number three, wal manduratu jama'atan. Wal-manduratu jama'atan is a vowed salah that is to be performed in congregation. A vowed salah that is to be performed in congregation. What do we mean by that? Let's say today you are at your home. And then now you have intended, you said today I must pray in congregation. Okay? You have made that intention at home. I have to pray in congregation. Okay? So you made a vow that you are going to pray in Jama'ah today. And then you found the Jama'ah. And then you become an Imam. Then now, since you are praying a prayer that you have vowed to be in congregation, 
and now you are an imam, then you should come with the intention of being an imam. Number four. Wal mutabaddimatu fil matari. Wal mutabaddimatu fil matari is a salah offered before it is time due to rain. Due to rain. So when you pray in Maghrib, for example, you pray in Maghrib and it is raining heavily. And then the jama'ah, they have to decide, okay, we cannot come back for Isha. Let's also pray Isha now. So we're going to learn about how you can combine prayers. There are certain prayers that you can combine. Okay? So even though it is not Isha time, but you can bring the Isha to the time of Maghrib. Okay? And then because of the rain. So if that thing happens, then, and you become to be the Imam for that prayer, then you also have to intend that you are an Imam. So a Salah, which is offered before it is time. Like you are praying Isha during Maghrib time. Okay, so you are praying that prayer before it is time. So there's something called Jamaat Taqdeem and Jamaat Taqir. I think there will be in the next slide we're going to learn them. Or maybe next year we're going to learn how you can combine prayers. Maybe like when it's raining or maybe you're traveling or so you want to shorten your prayers, you want to combine them. There are certain ways that you do them. But now here we're just learning about the time that you are supposed to come with the intention of being an imam, right? And Muslim, okay? So if you are praying a salah, which is offered before it is time due to rain, and you happen to be the imam, then you come with the intention of being an imam. So those four times, it becomes compulsory upon you to intend that you are an imam. So in your intention, besides intending that you are going to pray so the other day when we were learning about the three degrees of intention, if you are praying a farad prayer, you intend, number one, that you are going to pray salah, you also name the salah, and then you also name that it's a farad salah. Now this one you add, the fourth one, that you also an imam, so you add that. Okay. If, for this four, Friday prayer, if you are an imam, then you have to intend that you are an imam. Number two, if you are praying a salah that's been, that's been repeated, you are repeating for a second time, and you happen to be the imam, then you intend also that you are an imam. And then number three is a vow salah, that you're going to perform that in congregation, and you happen to be an imam, then you also come with the intention of being an imam. And then the last one is a salah, which is offered before it is time due to rain. Okay, so we can add one more slide. Yes. Okay, page 74. We're going to end with this one, inshallah. So we have about 10 minutes. So, Shurud al Qudwati Ahad Ashara. Shurud al Qudwati Ahad Ashara. Shurud al Qudwati Ahad Ashara. The conditions for following an Imam are 11. Okay? So a qudwa is basically someone is leading and you're following. Okay? So what are some of the conditions of following an imam? Okay, remember, I wanted to understand these two times in Arabic. Sometimes we forgot to explain what they mean. Imam and ma'mum. Okay? Imam and ma'mum. So who is, who is the imam? So the person who is leading the salah, mashallah. And then was Mahmoud is who? So the people that are following behind the Imam are called Mahmoud. So from now on, I will not explain what Imam is and what Mahmoud is, okay? So if you hear me say Mahmoud or Imam, then you know what I mean, okay? I've seen some people who say, Kofka's uh, Iman, Iman, Mahmoud. Okay? That means Imam, okay? It's not Iman. Iman is something that they believe, okay? Is it Iman? Iman, you are talking about a belief. So Imam is the one who is leading, okay? So in our case here, we are talking about Salah. Other case, you'll find Imam meaning something else, okay? So but in our case, since we are learning about Salah, Imam is the person leading the Salah. And Ma'amum is the people or the person who is praying behind an Imam, okay? So, 
Here are the conditions of following an imam or praying behind someone. Okay? Ayah 11. Number one. Allah ya'lama budlana salati imamihi bihadathin aw ghayri. Allah ya'lama budlana salati imamihi bihadathin aw ghayri. So the amum, the ma'amum or the follower shouldn't know about any invalidity of the salah of this imam due to ritual impurity or anything else. Okay. If you know that your imam has no wudu already, or you know your imam's salah is nullified, then you cannot follow. But if you do not know, then you can still pray behind that person. Okay. So, let's say you are with your friend. You guys just use the bathroom, but he forgets to make wudu, and you just made your wudu, and then you found him praying. Are you going to join him? No. no, because you know that he did not make wubu. But that means you already have a knowledge that he has no wubu. So you cannot pray behind him. But if you have no idea that he has no wubu, then you can still pray behind that person. So one of the conditions is the follower, the ma'amum, should not have any knowledge that the imam's prayer, the imam's prayer may be invalid. So if you have no knowledge of that, then you can pray behind that person. Then number two. وَأَلَّا يَعْتَقِدَ وُجُوبَ قَضَائِهَا عَلَيْهِ وَأَلَّا يَعْتَقِدَ وُجُوبَ قَضَائِهَا عَلَيْهِ It should not be such that according to the madhab of the mamum, the salah of the imam is invalid and it has to be, and it has to be repeated. It has to be repeated. So, again, this part is more body and more complicated. Okay? So it says it should not be such that according to the madhab, so I don't, don't worry about that part, the salah of the imam is invalid and has to be repeated. So I give you an example so you can understand it. Okay? So you can understand it. So it is a very cold, and for some reason the person could not make wudu. So instead of doing wudu, the person does tayammum. So what is tayammum? In order. Dry ablution, okay? So, so if you are at a place where there's an abundant water, your tayammum is not valid. But like if it's really cold, and you feel like if you, there's no way you can also heat that water, then you can go ahead and do tayammum, and then you pray, but then that prayer has to be repeated. Okay? Because you're going to repeat that prayer. Because your tayammum will not suffice it because you are at a place where you can find water. So you have the water, but it is cold, and you're afraid if you use that water, you might die. So you go ahead, you do your tayammum, you pray. But that prayer will be repeated later on. So whenever it is warm, and you're able, either you're able to find a place to warm your water, or the temperature is no longer freezing, then you're going to repeat that prayer. But for the other person, you are able to make wubu. Okay? So you are not going to pray behind that person who just did tayammum. So you are not going to pray behind that person who did tayammum because you know that this person will have to repeat his salah. Okay? So again, this is a lot of explanations. Some of you may be too young to understand it. 